and welcome back to Home Built Help's Tip of the Week. This week we're going to focus on scratch builders who need to make lots of holes both in ribs and in spars all over the aircraft. Now we're not going to talk about making the holes but rather some of the options we have for flanging them. Now why do holes have to have a flange? Well just like any part with a flange it becomes much more rigid, much stronger. And the same with these holes and we need to come up with a technique that puts a nice flange on holes of all different sizes. Sometimes we have large ones close to five inches and then smaller ones getting down in the two and a half, three inch range. Now historically there's been a number of methods and tools to create flanges and we want to take a look at them. The simplest way is to use a stick with a slot in it and simply take your time moving around the hole and bending the flange in place. That's definitely a little bit time consuming. Now we do have one stage a little more sophisticated than that. It's with a tool like this. Not much different than the stick with the slot in it but this one has two rollers and we simply put the edge of the hole between the two rollers and then work its way around the hole giving it some torque and bending that flange up. So that's a little bit quicker and makes a little bit nicer result. However, the quality of the flange and the time it takes is based on the person running it and of course that can be somewhat variable and a little bit time consuming but it does work and a lot of builders do use this technique. Now here is another tool for flanging. This is called the Flanger 360. Kind of a nice high-tech name. Basically anodized aluminum made up of about four parts. There's a backbone and then two parts that slide with thumb wheels on the top for adjusting. This one here is more of an idler. It has a groove on a bearing and on the other side this is adjustable too but it has a pivoting set of rollers. You notice two rollers here. In fact we're going to place the flange, the edge of the circle into these rollers and with a thumb wheel we can adjust the angle and slowly create the flange. You'll see this tool is very self-explanatory in a moment on how to use it, very easy to use. The nice part about it is that it is adjustable so it will flange any size hole and we can control the amount of flange angle by twisting this as we create the flange. Let's take a look at this in action. Now I'm going to use my adjustments so that the idler fits on one side and then the two rollers fit on the other. And as we rotate it around I'm going to tighten the thumb screw because this thumb screw here, I'll give it a few turns, is slowly going to rotate those two rollers upward and create the flange. So it's a simple tool to use and takes just a few minutes because as you'll see it's just a matter of rotating it enough and when the thumb screw gets all the way rotated in we will have our full flange. And I can show you what it looks like on the other side. The other side basically is there's our idler groove and there's one one of the rollers, the other rollers on the other side. And this is what's tilting up slightly by way of the thumb wheel. And now we have the thumb screw all the way in. So now I can simply loosen this up, remove it, 
and we have a very nice flange on here. And here we're doing a two inch hole. And that should do it. And that's with a two inch hole. So we have a nice extreme. That's about as small a hole as you can do with that tool. Now I've possibly saved the best for last. Well, maybe. Here is a set of flanging dies. I got these from Sonics Aircraft. They sell these, this pair, for less than $29. It's made out of a nylon, has a threaded hole, has obviously the male and female, and we're going to put our hole in the center and using a bolt, clamp these together and get a pressed flange. Now, these come in any sizes you want as long as they're either 4 inch or 3 inch. So, I'm kidding, they only come in two sizes, 4 inch and 3 inch. But the beauty of this is if you make all of your holes either 4 inch or 3 inch, you have a relatively low cost solution for the press type of flange. I have a nose rib here with a four inch hole and I want the flange to uh, protrude or extend on the inside. The only difficult thing is make sure the flange goes the right direction. The male part will fall into the hole and then the female will go on top and we'll go ahead with our bolt. We'll thread this in. The other side has a built-in nut inside of this. And I'm gonna go get a wrench and simply tighten away. So you don't have to build a Sonics plane to use a Sonics flanging die. Sonics aircraft, lots of them are traditionally plans built and so it was nice that the company offered these because if you get these made out of metal made by a machine shop they are very expensive and I'm going to get a slightly bigger wrench to finish cranking down, though I think I've hit the bottom right now actually, so, yep, oh, I'm in very good shape. Let's pull it apart and take a look. And that is very nice, nice and smooth. And that was awfully simple. So again, if you don't mind making all of your holes either 4 inch or 3 inch, you can get the dies for just about $29 a piece from uh, go to the Sonics Aircraft website and order some up. So in this tip we have shown you three tools for creating flanges in your lightning holes. Oh, and I want to thank everyone that became a patron. You're really helping to support these tips. There's always room for a few more, but we'll keep these tips coming. And now, everyone, all together now, back to building.